Welcome to module 40 of Point Set Topology Part 1. Today we will continue the study of compactness. I begin with one of the most important result about compact metric spaces as important as the three big theorems that we have proved for complete metric spaces, if not less. Okay, this may be even more important. That's called Lebesgue covering lemma. <laughs> Start with a compact metric space, given any open cover UI, there exists a real number R positive, such that every ball of radius r inside x is contained in one of the members of ui. So that is the statement. Several applications of this, even at your level, at the, the right in the beginning, while doing Riemann integrations and so on, especially for the closed interval 0, 1, function defined 0, 1. Directly or indirectly, you must have used this theorem. So let us have a proof of this one, which is not at all difficult. As soon as you have an open covering, because x is compact, there is a finite covering x is contained inside u1 cup un etc where ui's are coming from the given open covering ui if one of the ui's is the whole of x then there is nothing to prove you can take r to be any number every ball of radius r will be contained inside x which is one of the ui's so that's nothing uh, very great Okay, so we may implicitly and explicitly assume that the complement of UI, which I will denote by phi, is non-empty for i equal to 1, 2, 3, up to n. Okay, if the whole in x, there is nothing to prove. So we are assuming that fi's are non-empty. Now consider the distance function from fi. Let us call it fi of x. Recall what is fi of x? It is the infimum of all dxy, where y ranges over fi. So that is called a distance function. And we know that the distance function is continuous. Okay, distance of of an x, or x series over all the x, from a given set. This set is closed subset, which we will use soon. Right now, any set will do. That will be distance will function will be still continuous. Therefore, you take all f1, f2, fn, and take the maximum. That will be also continuous. Okay, so let us call that as fx. Now I use the fact that fi's are closed. Therefore, fi of x is 0, and the distance is 0, if and only if x belongs to fi. So this is where fi's are closed as been used. But u1, u2, un cover the whole of x. Therefore, if you take intersection of fi by De Morgan law, that must be empty. 
So if all the FIs are zero, that would have been X would have been inside the intersection, but intersection is empty. Therefore, given any X, at least one of the FI is not zero. Therefore, this FX, which is maximum, will be always positive. Okay, it will never be zero. Okay. Fx itself is the maximum of all the fi of x as a function. Now, this function which is continuous will attain its minimum on x. Why? Because x is compact. So, compactness is used twice here. Okay. That minimum will be a positive real number because f is never zero. This number will do the job. Namely, take any ball of radius r, any open ball of radius r, wherever you take the center. That ball will be contained in one of the members u1, u2, un. Okay, so that is the clef. One of the members will contain. Okay, so proof is very easy. If this is not true, what does that mean? A point belonging to this one is not here, means it will be inside Fi. Fi is a complement of Ui, right? So Y will be in Fi. As soon as Y is in Fi, the distance between X and Y okay, will be bigger than Fi of X. Because fi of x is distance of x and fi, which is a minimum of, infimum of all dxy. Okay, so dxy is bigger than fi of x. But fi of x is are all equal to, you know, I, I can take, I have taken vr of x contained inside ui, huh? one of the ui. If fi of x is equal to fx, why? Because fx is maximum of one of them, right? So, so one of the fi should be equal to that is bigger than equal to r, right? Some fi I am I am trying to say this is not true. So fx or each x will be equal to one of the fi of x. So I am putting equality here. But this is true for all, whatever, whenever y is there, this is true. So which implies that y is not inside VR of x, you see, because dxy is bigger than or equal to r. To be inside VR of x, the radius must be, the, the distance must be less than the radius. Okay. Given, actually what we have shown here is, given any x, Look at that index i for which fx is equal to fi of x because maximum is always for finite things, it will be equal to one of them, right? The same ui will do the job. This is what it means. That is not, not very important uh, to notice, but this is what how the, we have proved it. That's all. Look at uh, the way. The, the the argument goes first you have some kind of a infimum here then you have a supremum here maximum then again you have an infimum so the proof of this already gives you another principle which can be used in several mathematical concepts which is called minimax principle. I have no time to explain that one. I also, it is out of uh, our way. But this is used in complex. Uh, it is used in uh, all sort of analysis always. Okay, the proof itself is of of uh, importance here. So we can make a definition to be happy with this kind of concept. To so that we are able to. 
recall that concept very easily. Any number, positive number, such that this every ball of radius r is contained in one of the uis is called the lebesgue number of the cover ui start with any cover if there is an r like this that r will be called a lebesgue number it is very easy to see that if s is less than r of course i have to take a r always uh, positive so zero less than s less than r then R is a Lebesgue number implies S is also a Lebesgue number. So you can take the supreme of all such values and call that Lebesgue number. That is not necessary. So the practice is to get any number and then call that Lebesgue number. All right. Okay. A metric space XD which, which has this property that Every open cover has a Lebesgue number, okay, that is said to satisfy Lebesgue property. If this happens for every open cover in a, in a metric space, you can call that X as Lebesgue property. So, in this terminology, what we have proved is that every compact metric space has Lebesgue property. But there may be other spaces and other metrics, okay, they may have this property. We don't know whether that will imply <laughs> that is compact. So that is another aspect. So I am not going to touch that one here. But this is the definition. So we can just work out with this one. Lebesgue covering lemma is a very important result in real analysis. Let us. Uh, derive one immediate consequence from this one, namely another important concept in metric space theory, namely uniform continuity. Okay. In real analysis, you have seen that uh, continuous functions on closed intervals are uniformly continuous. Okay. So that can be extended. By the way, that is very much used in Riemann integration theory. So, so uniform continuity itself is an important thing. Take any function, okay, on a compact metric space to another topological space and a continuous one. Okay, the assumption is X is compact metric space. Then, given any open cover V i of y, there exists r positive such that for every x inside x, f of the ball vr of x is a subset of one of the vi's. Okay, why I why I call this one? Uh, by the way, the statement is directly straightforward because all that you have to do is. When you have taken a covering V i, take F inverse of V i, those things that will be a cover for X. Then choose this R to be Lebesgue number and then you have this property. So that is that is an easy consequence. But why this is called uniform continuity, I will explain. Okay. So if both X and Y were metric spaces, then how do you define my, how do you define uh, uh, uniform continuity? Given epsilon positive, there exists a delta such that xy distance is less than delta should imply fx fy distance is less than epsilon. That given epsilon, there is no metric on y. So I have to convert that one. And that is converted into open covering vi here. If you have metric space, when you have epsilon here, you have all epsilon balls. That's a cover, open cover. So that has been replaced by this vi now. These vi's play the epsilon. Okay. All over, whole, whole thing you have to talk about in one single core. 
okay then this r is actually plays the role of delta there is no problem so this r is independent of x you see if it's depend upon x that's ordinary continuity okay so this is the way the uniform continuity is attained so we shall take a break from compact matrix spaces now and go back to the study of compact spaces in general again now i come to one of the important results what is called as tubelema or valles theorem but what i am going to do is i am going to combine it with another important result which, which is not so central and do a bit of circus we give you a characterization of compact spaces see our definition of compact spaces is what every open cover has a finite sub cover so whereas many other examples we have seen that there are several definitions right so such an important thing you should have different ways of looking at it okay so here is two other way of looking at a compactness compactness as a property that's my two characterizations i'm going to give okay before that i will recall that you might have by now you might have seen such a thing but let us look at this one give an example to show that in general projection map is not closed so i still put it as an exercise but since i want to illustrate the the coming theme here so let me tell you that in general projection maps from x cross y to x or y projection map they are not closed maps they are open maps remember that okay while studying the product space we have seen all the time we have used it also so what is the simplest example there are many the simplest example is you know from r cross r to r itself look at a uh, hyperbola given by x y equal to 1 okay its projection on the x axis just misses the point 0 nothing else therefore it is not closed right so having said that now we come to the characterization of compact spaces no metric now so i would like to call it the whole thing as valles theorem in uh, classical book standard books valles theorem is only one third or even one sixth of whatever we are doing here okay i will tell you what it is exactly let x be any topological space then the following three conditions are equivalent so i have put deliberately the third one is x is compact the other two are going to be equivalent to that that is my aim the first thing is every topological space y for every topological space y look at the projection to the y coordinate from x cross y that is a closed mapping okay not just some y for every for every topological space y this should happen okay second thing is x satisfies the following condition which is somewhat longer so i have put this one carefully very much uh, visible so you should know this one this is the very important thing which goes under the name tube lemma so for every topological space y again pick up a point inside y and an open subset v of x cross y such that 
द कॉपी ऑफ एक्स एट वाई एक्स क्रॉस लिटल वाई कंटेन्ड इन साइड दिस ओपन सेट तो वी से नेबर ओपन नेबर ऑफ एक्स क्रॉस लिटल वाई suppose this is the situation then there exists an open neighborhood n which may depend upon y okay inside y of little y such that the entire x cross n is contained inside v okay so this is also very much used in analysis so this is a condition i want to say which will be equivalent to x being compact so third condition is x is compact okay the proof will go through not 1 implies 2 implies 3 implies 1 as usual but i will prove 1 and 2 are equivalent and 2 and 3 are equivalent so that's why i have put this one in the center so 1 implies 2 what is the meaning of that start with this this uh, condition that projection maps to every y is continuous is uh, closed then i must prove this condition okay so start with any y inside y and a neighborhood v etc of x cross y this part as well as the condition 1 then i must produce a capital n with this property right so take f to be the complement of v see v is a subset of x cross y so take its complement that will be a closed subset of x cross y okay now use this property 1 and come to y pi y of f is a closed subset right so its complement in y will be an open subset so where were you going x cross little y was completely contained inside v therefore x cross little y intersection with f which is the complement of v will be empty set that just means that the complement of the projection of the complement is just doesn't contain y that is an open subset this is what i start with f equal to we see pi y of f is closed okay now take the complement of of that pi y of f inside y that is an open set x cross little y intersection f is empty right because x cross y was contained inside v therefore this y will be inside this n y cannot be inside pi of f that is otherwise this would be a non empty okay projection x comma y if it is there then uh, projection would be inside f right so this is empty means now this y is inside n okay so y is a neighborhood of sir n is a neighborhood of y right that's what we are trying to prove here see n is a neighborhood of y and what i want to prove x cross n is contained inside v right so that also comes this is just freely here look at any point x cross n x comma y prime okay suppose it belongs to this one which just means that y prime is in n okay the second coordinate projection of this one cannot be inside f because because you have taken n is a complement so y prime is in n okay so y prime sorry y prime is in n is direct direct uh, x comma y prime is in f cross y but y prime is in n implies y prime is not in f pi y of f okay that means x comma y prime is in a complement of that that is v so otherwise it will be in f so the entire x cross n is contained inside v 
so that was easy proof all right so just set theoretically you have to chase it all right so one implies this condition now we will revert this one namely that condition implies one namely take any space y x cross y to y you have to show it is a closed mapping now start with a closed subset then pi y of f is closed is what you have to show take the complement you must show that this complement is open inside y the same way we have i am trying to go backwards there okay now take y belonging to u again these are all set theory they are reversible this just means that x cross little y intersection f is empty now you take v as x cross y minus f okay f to begin with y was f was closed so x cross y minus f into okay to get once you have this an open subset right the property 2 gives you a neighborhood of y okay n such that y is in n and n is open and x cross n is inside v so it follows that as soon as this is possible x cross n intersection f is empty because what by definition v is x cross y minus f okay therefore n is contained inside u because u is a complement okay so more or less you know if we choose correctly the notation every arrow can be reversed here from 1 and 2 this because it's a more complicated statement so it's better to write uh, independent proof that's what i have written okay so 1 implies 2 and 2 implies 1 is over now come to 2 implies 3 and 3 implies 1 3 implies 2. So I first prove 3 implies 2. I save the last thing. Okay, namely 2 implies 3 for the last thing. That is the theorem which is called Valle's theorem. Sorry, this is the one which is called Valle's theorem or tube lemma. 3 implies 2. 3 is compactness, right? Yeah, 3 is compact. Compactness implies this one. is a standard result which is called valle's theorem or tube lemma okay so what i have done is i have made it into if and only if along with another condition here okay let us prove this one let x be compact we have to prove x satisfies this w this property valle's valle's property i have denoted by w w for valle's okay so the entire property you have to prove so what is the meaning of property proving i have to start with the hypothesis of the property so y inside y x x cross little y contained inside v v open this much you have to start with we have to find n as required namely n open y inside n the whole n is contained inside v so all x cross n is contained inside v that's what you have to prove. for each x comma y in x cross y we can find an open subset wx gx in because by the way y is fixed here huh? x is the variable here but x comma y is inside x cross y y is fixed this is given so wx gx in x and gx is open in y okay open subset such that xy is in the product so this is the definition of the product topology right these are the basic open subsets wx cross gx since v is open there is a basic open set the basic open set looks like a product that's all i have used that's the merging mode that v is an open subset containing x cross little y okay here only x varies y is fixed as x varies these w axis will cover 
capital X. That's an open cover. Now use the property that X is compact. Get a finite cover. Wx1, Wxk. Okay, all that you do is take the intersection. You have finite Wx1, take n equal to intersection of all these Wxis. The intersections, all these, I want to, I want a, a open subset of uh, Y, so Gx size. Okay, the corresponding Gx size. Wx1, Wxn are covering for X. So Gx1, Gh2, Gxn are all neighborhoods of Y. Take the intersection that will be neighborhood of little y. And that will do the job because now take any point x comma y prime here. Okay, y prime is n means y prime is in all the gx size. Right? X is in one of the wx size, which you don't know. Suppose it's in wx1. Then x comma y will be in wx1 cross gx1. That is inside the over. So that is why you have to take the intersection here. Okay. So the proof of Valle's theorem as such, classically, is just that much only. Okay, this three implies two. Now finally, I come to two implies three. Pay attention to this. Okay, because many expositions, many books don't have this uh, this uh, theorem. Definitely not this proof. All right. Now I have to prove that the space X is compact by using the condition two. Two implies three means that. Okay. So start with any open cover for X. How to use 2 so that this is going to give me a sub cover? The 2 says for every y something is true. So I must cook up some, you know, some uh, nice space y. Nice means what? You know, friendly, which will give you something. Okay, space y such that when I apply this condition, this condition to that y, this condition, for this is true for every y, but how to use that? You have to cook up some y, so that when you use this condition, that will should give you axis compact. Okay, so that, uh, that having said that much, I have just go ahead with, with the proof, how you have got this one. Start with an open cover for the given topological space X. Now go to the power set of X. Now my Y is going to the power set of X and I must give you a topology on this power set of X. Okay. So the open subsets of power set of X will be what? They will be collections of subsets of X. Okay, it is a, it's a subset of the power set of X, sub collection of power set of X. So you have to be careful here what is going on. We shall construct a topology and then take Y as this space in the hypothesis to arrive at a conclusion that U admits a finite cover. So this Y is going to be depending upon the covering U. The underlying space is always Px, the power set of x. But the topology I choose will depend upon the covering u. Okay, that will say that this covering has finite subcovers, finite subfamily that covers. Okay, so that is the trick. For any a inside x, let us make a notation here. A plus means all the supersets of A, collection of all supersets, everything which contains A, 
and of course subsets of x all a such that a is contained inside b that is the notation a plus for instance if a is empty what will be a plus it will be the whole of all the subsets power set of x which will come okay every subset is contains empty set right so empty plus c is the power set itself similarly if a is x then what will be a plus it will consist of only one element namely x itself it is a singleton x you remember that it is not x it is a singleton x whereas a is empty it is all the one entire all the subsets of x the power set of x it is not x okay so that is the convention here okay let b be the family of all u pluses where u ranges over this open cover okay this collection b i don't know what topology what property it has it doesn't matter take this as a subspace sub base for a topology to add any collection of subsets of a given set this time the given set itself is px okay that will generate a topology the smallest topology generated by this as a sub base so tau hat i am denoting it is nothing but tau of b that we have earlier used the notation so this is a topology on px that is what i am interested in now clearly depends upon u okay an important point to note is that the singleton x is in every non empty member of tau hat take an open subset of tau hat singleton x will be always there why because you look at u u plus of course empty set doesn't have empty set is also there in every topology right take any non empty set look at this u plus all supersets so in every u plus the tax is there so when you take sub base remember you have to take finitely many open sets in the in the sub base and then intersect you intersection will also contain the singleton x then the union of course will contain singleton x so singleton x is in every member okay other than the empty set okay so i have taken y as px to hat all right so now this is y so what is your v open subset it is equal to all those which look like u cross u plus u is a member of this one okay that is a subset of x cross u plus which is a subset of px so this is going to be a subset of x cross y okay then clearly v is an open subset of x cross y now singleton x is in always in the second factor here u plus for all x for all u therefore therefore what whatever you take here singleton x is there but when you rearrange u this curly u covers x therefore what happens this entire x cross singleton x is contained inside v so this is the situation of the condition w valis condition given this little x is the point of y remember that okay and x cross little y contained inside v v open what does it give you it gives you a neighborhood n of the little x here okay capital x here singleton x here such that x cross little x or capital singleton x 
is contained inside x cross and contained inside v. So that is the conclusion of two. All right. So after cooking up this y, which is a topology on the power set, I have used that one condition in condition two to get this neighborhood. Now I want to say that this will give you a finite cover out of you. Can you see how finite cover comes? It's a trick here. Yeah, that is a very strange thing. Even now, you may not see why the finite cover comes. Okay. The point is, the B here. This is a sub base. What is the meaning of sub base for an open subset in a, in a topology? You have to take given any point x belongs to some open set, then there will be finitely many members from B such that their intersection contains the point as well as contained in the given open set. Right? A basic open set out of this one is finite intersection of members of this one. So that is what I am going to use here. Little x, x cross, singleton x is x cross in n, right? Right? Now I will replace this little x belong to n, right? I will replace this n by a basic open set. Members of B and then finitely many of them intersect with that. n is not equal to this, but in this statement, I can replace it. In 25, this, this statement, I can replace it. Because this singleton x will be inside this one. And this is contained inside capital N. So x cross n will be also. So instead of this one, I can write this one. That's all I am doing. I can write the intersection I to 1 to u plus to make it simplified. In other words, I am getting another equation here, namely x cross the singleton x is contained in x cross this intersection contained inside v. Okay, instead of calling it, you can call this as n prime as well as something. Okay, so 25 can be read with n equal to intersection of ui plus, okay, where i range from 1 to n. Now you verify another property of this plus. The supersets of, of, of A. A plus intersection B plus. What are they? Something belongs to this one means it, it contains both A and B. This is subset of members of this one are subsets of X. If it is contains A, it is here. It contains B, it is here. If it contains A and B, it contains A union B. So it is here. And conversely, any set contains a both A and B, uh, A union B will contain both A and B. So A plus intersection B plus is the same thing as A union B plus. So this happens for every member. In particular, it happens for the members of U also. And hence, put G equal to union of U. See, this U1, U2, 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 you have got finite. Now you take g equal to i ring to 1 to n ui. Okay. It follows that this w is equal to g plus. Okay. What was w? I forgot. There is no w here, no? W is g plus here. Huh? W equal to g plus. No? But what is w? G is this one, G plus, okay, G plus is what? G plus is union of this, apply this one uh, inductively. So what do you get? This is for two of them, you can do it for n of them, okay. So G plus is intersection of your eyes plus, that is n. So this W was n here, that's all. So this is a typo, this must be n, that's all I wanted. Okay, by this notation, if you look at the intersection of u pluses, it's the same thing as 
take union of these and then take the plus. So this n is g plus. Okay. So it remains to show that I want to show g itself is x. I want what I want is not this one, but there's a on the way. But I want to show that this union i range to 1 to n ui covers x. That will prove that this open sub open covering has a finite subcovering. And since u is an arbitrary open covering, that will prove x is compact. Okay, so that is the whole idea. So I have to show that these uis, okay, these are ui plus, these uis, they cover x. Okay, so look at x comma singleton g, okay, this is a member of x cross g plus. Remember what was g plus, whatever g is, g plus contains all those members which contain g, in particular g is there, okay. So this is a member here, g in g plus, all right. So what is the meaning of this x comma g belongs to this one? x comma g will be inside v because the whole thing was this x cross n g plus is x cross n that's what i have used here n here and x cross n is contained inside v by 25 so you write it as n that's all hmm. all right so now come here yeah so this implies x comma x comma singleton g is inside v which is same thing as now x comma g belongs to u cross u plus for some u inside u right just go ahead what was v v is the union of all this so it must be inside one of the u cross u plus right okay for some u inside that what is the meaning of this? This is an ordered pair. X is inside U and G is inside U plus means what? G is inside U plus means G contains U. So X inside U inside G for some U inside U. Right? Therefore, remember all the U's will cover X. That is the starting point. Therefore, all of x is contained inside g. Start with any x here. Okay. Then you go through this one. It shows that it's inside g. Therefore, this x is contained inside g. But g is a subset, subset of x after all. So x is g. Okay. In some sense, this has the magic of Furstenberg's proof of uh, uh, natural, you know, the primes, infinity to our primes. <laughs> the, the key here, passage from arbitrary to finite, comes only because the topology has the property that such families you know, generate topologies by taking finite intersections first and then going to the arbitrary union. That's all. There is no other way I can explain this one. Okay, suddenly you get finite. From where? See, compactness, in the definition, we have put the finiteness ourselves. Now you have to produce it. Right? You understand why what is going on so you have to choose a proper you know properly thought uh, open cover here the starting with open cover properly thought uh, topology okay yeah so having said that let me Again, we repeat a few things which I have told already. Usually, the three implies two, 
of this theorem is known as tubular Maro Arras theorem. This itself is a very subtle result and it is very useful also. For example, we can derive the theorem 3.64 from it. So this I will leave it as an exercise to you. The uniform continue, uniform continuity, etc. It is useful in many other situations as well. Okay. There are proofs of 1 implies 3. See, now we have all, all the three are equivalent. Right? So this, all the three are equivalent. Well, how, how I have proved it? I have proved 3 implies 2 and 2 implies 3. 1 implies 2 implies 3, I already tell you. 1 implies 3. So, some people, you know, classically have proved that, not very classically, this is a modern approach now. 1 implies 3 using ideas of nets and filters. These things you can find in many books. Okay, proof of 1 implies 3 by using nets or filters. The what are called as ultra filters really uh, produce this thing in a magic, just the way this proof has produced it. Okay, the nets also give you, uh, they pretend to explain it, but it is still a some kind of mystery only how the proof comes. So that is one thing I wanted to tell you. Whereas the proof that I have given, namely uh, 2 implies 3, okay, uh, not, uh, yeah, compactness implies 3 is, yeah, 2 implies 3, namely from Valle's condition producing the uh, compactness. This seems to be new. I have not seen it anywhere, okay. Now, in part two of this course, I plan to give a not so difficult proof of Tikhonov's theorem, namely arbitrary product of compact species compact using one implies three of this theorem, along with principle of transfinite induction. So, this transfinite induction takes some time, that is why. I have put it in part two. Otherwise, I could have done it right now also. Okay. So that is the, the thing I want to tell you. So next time onwards, we will take up some other properties, namely countability, separability, and so on. Thank you.